Good afternoon, everyone. Let me briefly tell you about my PhD thesis. I'm working on novel pharmacological approaches in the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. We choose this topic because of the compl complication and because of the severity of the situation that we are dealing with. Uh, we've seen that there is a lot of room uh, for the improvement in the clinical approaches, but before we go into the science and the methodology, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Anna Bardoci. I'm a pulmonology resident in the Department of Pulmonology at Semmelweis University. During my work, I meet many patients who is dealing with obstructive sleep apnea, which is destroys their quality of life, so I want to improve on that. And uh, our um, research uh, team working on uh, to resolving the problem with the GLP-1 uh, analogs to reduce the symptoms and the severity. So I have two ongoing projects. The first one is a systematic review and a meta-analysis, and the second one is a protocol for a future randomized control trial. Uh, both of them are closely related to each other, so I want to present a common background slide for them. So obstructive sleep apnea is a serious sleep disorder that involves the collapse of the upper airwaves. One out of four people are affected, and it has several negative health effects from sleepiness and uh, road traffic accidents to early death. Obstructive sleep apnea severity is measured with apnea hypopnea index by counting the numbers of apneas and hypopneas during sleep. This table shows the classification based on the severity. In several cases, the most commonly used therapy is the continuous positive airway pressure therapy, which is not only uncomfortable uh, to wear while you sleep, as you can see it, but uh, it also significantly impairs the quality of life. The major risk factor for obstructive sleep apnea is obesity. 58% of the cases are linked to excess weight, especially the pharyngeal weight accumulation and the uh, abdominal adipose tissue. Therefore, the weight loss is also recommended uh, treatment choices for obstructive sleep apnea patient. But we think about weight loss, everybody thinks about the healthy diet and physical activity, but therefore are some novel pharmacotherapy choices. I think most of you have already heard about glucagon-like peptide 1 analogs. These, uh, uh, the two most well-known medication is uh, Ozempic and Saxenda. This medication can regulate your appetite. They can reduce the adipose tissue while your muscles doesn't decrease. So in this diagram, you can see the effectiveness of, of weight reduction with semaglutide, which is the active ingredient of Ozempic. But how can GLP-1 analogs work in obstructive sleep apnea? We know the obstructive sleep apnea patient is recommended for the weight loss, and we know the GLP-1 analogs can help with weight loss, so this is one way. Furthermore, uh, the GLP-1 analogs improve the collapsibility of the airways and also has direct airwave action. And in this study, you can see how the drug can reduce the apnea hypopnea index which is decreasing the severity of the disease. But uh, unfortunately, these medications haven't been implemented in the clinical practice yet, so our aim is to investigate the GLP-1 analogs are effective treatment choices in obstructive sleep apnea. So our first project is investigating the effectiveness of GLP-1 analogs in obstructive sleep apnea patient is a systematic review and meta-analysis. And our clinical question is, can GLP-1 analogs reduce the apnea hypopnea index to leading to improvement in obstructive sleep apnea patient? Our patient population is obstructive sleep apnea patient. The intervention is GLP-1 analogs. The comparison is placebo. And we have a primary outcome is apnea hypopnea index. And we have several secondary outcomes like body weight, body mass index, daytime sleepiness, oxygen desaturation index, and minimum oxygen saturation during sleep. So our hypothesis is that GLP-1 analogs can reduce the apnea hypopnea index. And uh, our clinical implication is that weight loss therapy with the GLP-1 analogs as a standard of care for patients with obstructive sleep apnea. So go into the methodology. I do my systematic search in three different uh, databases. And uh, here you can see my search key. And uh, after I finish the full text selection, I have only five eligible full text, which is not too much, but uh, we found four ongoing RCTs. 
and most of them want to include, uh, want to publish, sorry, want to publish in uh, 2024 uh, in the spring. So uh, I hope they publish this as soon as possible so we can include them also for our meta. And uh, here you can see where is my first project state. I finished the full text and uh, I started extracting the data. So I'm very happy with my first project progress. So now we can go <laughs> to the second project. My second project is investigating the effects of liraglutide in obese obstructive sleep apnea patient. It's a protocol for a future randomized control trial. Uh, our research team want to examine the other effects of liraglutide, which is a GLP-1 analog uh, among in obese obstructive sleep apnea patients. So our clinical question is, can liraglutide help to reduce obstructive sleep apnea complication in obese patient? Our patient population is obese obstructive sleep apnea patient. The intervention is liraglutide plus the CPAP treatment. The comparison is placebo plus the CPAP treatment. And we have several outcomes. The first, com uh, first outcome is body weight and body mass index. The second is obstructive sleep apnea severity parameters. The third one is lung function parameters. The third one is cardiometabolic parameters, and we also want to measure the daytime sleepiness, the quality of life, and the safety of the drugs, because every drug has uh, adverse events. So our hypothesis is liraglutide uh, reduces the complication in obstructive sleep apnea patient, and our clinical implication is to include liraglutide in the treatment of protocol for obstructive sleep apnea patient. And uh, my second project in the very early phase, so I'm here in this uh, state with my second project, so I would like to uh, finish my presentation with the words of the famous physicist George Gamow. Science is not just about knowing things, it's about asking questions and pushing the boundaries of the knowledge, and thank you for your attention. I would like to congratulate you. It was very good. Uh, my question is, uh, are you planning to create any subgroups in your first project? Uh, we don't want to make subgroups uh, because uh, in obstructive sleep apnea patients, we all of them included uh, in this project. And uh, we see all of the previous uh, published articles have uh, don't uh, subgroup the patients. So this is why we don't want to uh, make subgroups in our meta. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm the second questioner. A congratulations on your topic. It's Thank very you. interesting. Um, what I wanted to ask you is regarding your first topic. You were talking about GLP-1 analogs, and I wanted to ask: Do you investigate also the side effects or any unwanted side effects that give the GLP-1 gives, or you're not looking into that? For the first uh, project, yes. we we don't include the side effects uh, because we want to investigating if the positive effects in uh, the apnea hypopnea index, which we, we can uh, measure the severity of the disease. But the second project, we want to also include the safety and the, the adverse effects. We want we include in that. So, right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So you mentioned from um, uh, these GLP-1 analogs improve uh, the apnea hypopnea index, uh, but we also know that they support weight loss. So, uh, and we also know that weight loss is itself improves uh, these symptoms. So uh, you mentioned that it improves the collapsibility, but how do you uh, measure these? So how do you differentiate between the two? How can you see that it also has an extra effect on the airways? In the second uh, diagram that I show, this is the, the most of the key articles for me is uh, the Blackman and all uh, published it at uh, 2060, uh, at 2016. So uh, in this uh, case, they give uh, liraglutide and uh, the other uh, group, they give placebo, but both of the group uh, have uh, calorie deficit and uh, both of the group have uh, physical activity and both of the group are lose weight but it's uh, twice as effective with the liraglutide mm -hmm. the apnea hypopnea index so I think it's a very <laughs> very important uh, data. So Thank you. How can you measure the daytime sleepiness uh, in your second project? Uh, we want to measure with the F-port sleepiness scale. It's um, uh, self uh, writing a survey, uh, you can uh, 
Google it for them. Uh, it has a eight situation, and you can give a point from uh, zero to three. It's zero, it's no chance to uh, sleep during some uh, mm, something that you do, and the three is the high chance you sleep. Uh, for example, they ask uh, uh, which time you can sleep after you eat, or you can sleep while you are uh, um, watching TVs, and so on. You can uh, do this time. So this is the second. Really nice presentation. Thank you. I have uh, questions for the future, maybe. Um, it might be my, my misinformation, but as far as I know, these GLP-1 analogs are usually used intermittently. So for two uh, months and then they abandon the use, using uh, these analogs. Uh, does it affect the future of the obstructive sleep apnea? That, is it possible that, these, um, uh, that the, the apnea, apnea comes back after, after uh, using GLP-1 analog and abandon them and uh, gain weight again? So uh, they, the GLP-1 analogs don't, don't use in, um, uh, in intermittently because uh, the first of the uses, usage for the diabetes patient, they can control your uh, glycemic, uh, glucose at the endoglycemic uh, <laughs> state, and, uh, and uh, we want to give it. Uh, we don't uh, see how wh what happened when they stopped. Maybe they can uh, regain the vein, the get no, so so regain the weight, but uh, after that they it's a it's a help for weight loss because they can regulate your appetite and so on. So it can help.